It's a lie! <laughs> it's a lie! It's a lie! <laughs> Welcome to Scrap Heap Challenge, where two teams of bright sparks are about to plug into this week's challenge. It's an off-road challenge with a difference this week. Our teams must engineer high-voltage, electric-powered milk floats capable of conquering tough terrain as they endeavour to safely deliver a dozen crates of milk. Electric milk floats don't usually conjure up visions of high-speed extreme vehicles, they're more usually associated with pedestrian speeds and tarmacked cul-de-sacs. But Scrap Heap is determined to shake off this plodding image. Yes, this week our teams must manufacture mud-munching milk floats. Our first team hoping to be cream of the crop are a team of classic car nuts from deepest, darkest Cornwall. This trio of wild drivers are led by Captain Brian and his wily scavengers are Steve and Spencer. They are the Beasts of Bodmin. Their opponents this week aren't the type to cry over spilt milk. They're a gang of easy-going Essex bikers who love to speed through the streets of Southend. Led by clean-cut Captain Bob, his rough riding scavengers are Slick Mick and Axel. They are the Sevens. Welcome, teams. So you have just ten hours to turn this pile of junk into juiced-up electric cars capable of competing in the mother of milk rounds. Go on the sound of the gong. Wait for it, team. Wait for it. Go! OK, lads, what do you think? Well, it's got to be light. It's got to have suspension. Yeah, traffic. that's right. Plenty of grip. Four-wheel drive would be Four good. Four-wheel drive, electric motor. Electric motor, motor must, good electric motor. Yeah. We've got plenty of power. There might so. be a milk float out there mm. we could rob. First oh. impression? Oh. Yeah, we can Something do it. wide. The main concern is a chassis and whatever, on it? As, as light as possible, of course. Powering a vehicle using electricity poses an interesting problem. An electric motor, like a petrol one, simply uses energy to turn a prop shaft. But unlike a petrol engine, the power comes from batteries. Increasing the voltage from the batteries makes the motor run faster. So our teams must find a reliable way of transferring battery power to the motor and then transferring that power to the wheels. Doddle. As normal, we've drafted in two bright sparks to aid our teams separate the positives from the negatives in their designs. To juice up the beast's build, we have expert Paul Compton, who specialises in converting road cars into electric cars. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts? Ideally, four-wheel drive would be nice if we can find the hardware. Very small four-wheel drive car. That was my and thoughts. Milk float motor, possibly forklift. I would go onto the original gearbox on the vehicle. What yeah. would be considered a standard conversion? The beasts plan to rip the motor out of a four x four and replace it with an electric one. They'll attach the motor's prop shaft directly to the vehicle's gearbox. However, in order to regulate its speed, they plan to construct their own control system. It's a complex electrical job, and if they get it wrong, they could be in for a nasty shock. I myself got an electric car converted exactly the way motor onto the original gearbox using the clutch. Hoping to transform the Sevens plan is a man who won't be shocked by this week's challenge. Nick Bell is an electric train expert. Interesting challenge, yeah? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Off-road milk float. Yeah. Any ideas on donor vehicles, guys? Electric um, forklift or something? Forklift yeah, trucks? Yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe. That, that could do the job. Or if we can find a milk float. Yeah, if, milk if, float if there's one yeah, there. Milk yeah. float would be a good option. Any thoughts on the drive itself? Then no difference. With a diff, we'll lose, we'll lose grip. So we're going to need a wheel. Clearly on each corner, we're going to need a, a, a base chassis. The Sevens also plan to attach an electric motor to an existing vehicle. But instead of building their own controller, they want to take a shortcut and find a motor with its own power controller still attached. If they fail to find a complete unit, they'll be stuck with a motor that only runs at one speed. So it could be the slowest milk cart in the heap. We can yeah. find the chassis to build onto, yeah. and then if we can find a donor vehicle for the motor and the electrics, right. and that would be great. Well, we need a, a 4x4, 
we're obviously going to need a chassis, aren't we? Yeah. A motor. A Massive donor vehicle motor. for the yeah, for the electrics. Us. Okay, lads, we know what we got. Let's yep. go. Away you go. Come on, time is the essence. Go, go, go. With two similar designs needing similar scrap, both sets of scavengers will need to be at their best. Oh, they're off to a flying start. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, look at that. There's some skillful quadding there. Absolutely. Yeah. Axel, Axel, up. Axel's, you know. Right, don't for a gentle job. Yeah, don't yeah. want to rush. Both teams are out scrambling to find the same parts for their electric off-road milk floats. Cornish classic car nuts, the beasts of Bodmin, are racing to find a four-wheel drive vehicle and replace its engine with the most powerful electric motor they can find. What's this, Spence? What's this? What's this? Well, hey, what you found? And it looks like Steve's cat-like senses have instantly spied their prey. Five hammers, we've got a Suzuki four wheel drive. That sounds ideal, that's light, yeah. We do need to well, find the motor. What about if I, if I start clearing this Suzuki and Spence goes around and looks for a motor with the trailer, yeah? Sounds a good idea, that's excellent. Get on, guys, do it. Right, I'll crack on with, I'll crack it on with this now. Easy-going Essex bikers, the Sevens, are also after a vehicle to mount an electric motor on. But rock and stroll Axel has no sense of urgency. The Suzuki Jeep would have been perfect, but the speedy beasts of Bodmin have nabbed it first. One out, one out, it's all tied together. Their laid-back Captain Bob the biker is blissfully unaware that his slow-moving scavengers are second best. There we go. The beasts of Bodmin's lightning scavenging might have left the opposition picking over yeah, scrap. Drag it around a bit. That was, right. a, that was a top Excellent. bit of scavenging, guys. That was very classy. <laughs> so I thought, oh, they'll be here for hours. What is the plan then? Body's right. coming off. Just Body's use a chassis, drivetrain. Axles. Lose the axe, lose the motor. Right. And hopefully put an electric motor in the place of the engine. Right. But keep the rest of the running keep, gear So you'll intact. keep the, the running gear as it is. That's the plan. Which is already four-wheel drive. Exactly. You're there. You're more or less done. Huh. Yeah. A scrap heap isn't the first place you'd look for dangerous animals. But our wildcat team, the Beasts of Bodmin, are equally at home restoring classic jags and brutish bikes as they are hiding out on the moors. Captain Brian is the leader of the pack. So it's a three-piece here and we got released for the day. So... Steve is the cat lover, jaguars in particular. Well, they're not quite as beastly as the beast of Bodmin, they're, they're, they're certainly a little feline grace to them. Free-spirited biker Spencer... That never last long anywhere, me. <laughs> ..completes this wild bunch. But Captain Brian is confident he'll be hanging around the heat for quite a while. We three, the beasts of Bodmin, we're all going to win. Eve. Bossy Captain Brian is a hard taskmaster. What's the delay? But his hungry scavengers seem more than up for the task. Right, I'll get the tiller. I like a team that don't refer to a steering wheel as a steering wheel, but a tiller. It's class. Ambling Essex bikers, the Sevens, are also after a base vehicle for their electric milk float. But their stalled start has left them with a second-rate vehicle. Uh, it's got a um, Isuzu Trooper. Uh, four before. It looks as if it's complete. Yeah, got the uh, gearbox, axle. Sounds as big, that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, see if we can find a bit smaller. It's a trifle large, that one, at the moment. And Axel's hunt for an electric motor is far from first class. It's one of the electric floor cleaners. Well, keep looking. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's plenty more out there, mate. The Sevens are definitely stuck in the slow lane, which is not what you'd expect from rough-riding bikers. Named after the biker cafe where they meet, the Sevens are more usually found speeding around the streets of South End. Every Thursday night we're out running around, yeah, tearing up the town, and just about anywhere else. It's a good laugh. Captain Bob is the pin-up of this crew. Well, we had to bring one for him, one along with Couldn't have three of us. But he isn't sure he's a natural leader. I'll give my view, they'll give theirs, and we'll go their way. Slick Mick tends to agree. If he drives us too hard, we can always tell him, you know, where to go, can't we? <laughs> And it's unlikely Axel is going to take control. I'm just there for eye candy, I'm just there for the looks. And, you know, <laughs> I, I can't actually uh, do anything myself, I'm just going to stand around and look pretty. Yeah. It could be a chaotic day for the Sevens, but whatever they build, they're certain to push it to its limit. Going fast is good, 
The stopping's the problem, usually. The nearest wall will do. <laughs> Hey, Steve. Yeah? His electric motor's sitting here staring at us. Oh. Look. It's all right, this found a milk flow. That's a result, it's got engine, isn't it? Yeah. The laid back sevens have finally struck gold. Gold top, that is. An electric milk float motor could be just what they're after. Just make sure it's got the control stuff and it'll make life a lot easier for us, bro. We've done the boozer earlier. An electric motor works by using power from a battery to spin an electromagnetic prop shaft. To speed up the motor, a complex control system steadily increases the number of volts from the batteries. Without a controller, it's zero or maximum. Not the best way to drive a milk float. There's um, some of the control gear missing. Looks like it's been taken off. Axel is right to look concerned. Their plan relies on finding a complete control panel. And whilst a biker's scavenge hits a brick wall, Classic Jag lovers, the beasts of Bodmin, have already got their Suzuki back to the build. It's a lightning scavenge by Steve and Spencer. I'd bought cars that sound worse than that. <laughs> but there's no resting on their laurels. This team mean business. Right, we need to get this back, get the quad out, get you back on the heat. We need that motor. Captain Brian is leading from the front and the Suzuki is being rapidly ripped down to a bare carcass in readiness for its electric conversion. While Steve and Spence leave no scrap unturned in a hunt for a suitable electric motor. With the beasts back on the prowl for more parts, Essex bikers, the Sevens, need to scavenge something sharpish. Is that one better than that one? Well, we've got an axle. Yeah, Captain. Thank you, mate. We found another milk flow. Does it got all the electrics with it? Yeah. Yeah, this one's got all the electrics with it. Earlier on, you were trying to move that milk flow over there. Yeah. Now you're moving this one. Well, that one's got no axle on it. This one's got a rear axle, so we can be able to drag it back a lot easier. Right, so you can And it's use... got all the bits on here that we need anyway. Excellent. So you're completely binning that one, forgetting about that one? Well, we might come back and nick a few bits off later, but uh, at the moment, this is our main priority. Got a motor up here. Slick Mick shouldn't be so relaxed about the other milk float. Both teams are hunting for the same scrap. And the predatory beast of Bodmin have sniffed it out. Right, we've got a milk float, we've got a beautiful motor there. Look at that gorgeous well motor. Tip. That is my baby. Oh, yes. Gas axe to get it out. The beast seem more than pleased with the vehicle rejected by the Sevens. It makes you wonder whether the bikers made a bad choice. Uh, Captain Bob the biker has no idea how badly his scavengers are doing. Yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. Can you hear me, Bob? I can just hear you. Hello, Bob. I've totally lost you, mate. Have you brushed your hair yet, Bob? I'm getting lonely out here. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Axel! Is that a cry of anguish from the other team? Yeah, it sounded like it. I've got that worry, though, that we're doing one of those, you know, the classic challenge where we're going to do off-road milk floats that go really fast, you know, and then we'll all be there and, and go! You know, half a quarter of a mile an hour and then they get stuck. The first hump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, take some of the milk crates off. <laughs> they won't, they won't, surely they won't. Because that's all I, I haven't even dared ask, they, you know, are, how powerful are electric motors, really? And how fast can they really go? And how many batteries do you need to make them go? And how long will they last? Will they do one circuit of the track? Will it go, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> if our teams need any inspiration for their design, they need look no further than the most famous electric vehicle, the Lunar Rover. Not so much off-road than off-planet. The Lunar Rover was powered by four electric motors, one for each wheel. It could easily climb 25 degree slopes, making it a 4x4 electric vehicle that was out of this world. Back on planet Earth and frustrated by the biker's lack of progress, Captain Bob finally takes control. Oh, yeah, we're going to leave this here. We'll just take the controls and bits that we need. Because all we're going to do back there is what we're going to do here. Both Bob and expert Nick are desperate to get something back to the build area. Then we can start work on that. Get out of the way. They intend to mount the milk float motor onto the Isuzu Trooper that they found earlier. But that motor doesn't look all that healthy. Seven hours, teams. Seven hours construction time remaining. Seven hours, thank you. Yeah, we're just ripping out a control panel. Steve's on his last girder. It's taking a little longer than what we expected, but 
We're making progress. OK, mate. It's been an electric start for the beast of Bodmin. Skillful scavenger Stephen Spence have found an electric milk float motor and all the parts they need to build their own control system. And their commanding Captain Brian has already ripped out the gas guzzler in readiness to attach their electric motor to the existing clutch and gearbox. By making a straight engine conversion, the beasts have given themselves a big advantage. By attaching the motor to the clutch, the beasts will be able to utilise all the gears available, even reverse. However, if the clutch plate isn't centred exactly into the electric motor's drive shaft, it could easily shake itself apart. Our sparky judge this week is Robert Fowler. From his workshop in Somerset, he converts almost any car to completely roadworthy electric vehicle capable of over 100 miles an hour. So you think it is possible to, to put together a vehicle that has the power? It's basically the power, isn't it, and the speed? It is, yeah. To, to do that with, with electricity. The electric motors are fantastically efficient. They achieve sort of 90% efficiency, compared with a petrol engine, which is pathetic, somewhere between 15 and 25%. Wow. Electric motors are fantastically talky. You can't stall an electric motor no, in really the same yes. sense as you can no. a petrol engine. No. <laughs> it doesn't stop. It, yes, it, just no, keeps it going. sits there and burns out, but it doesn't stop. The batteries are the weak link. A gallon of petrol contains 43 points something or other kilowatt hours of energy. Um, 250 kilos of battery has less than generally 10 kilowatt hours. So, so oh, I think quarter. so. All oh, right. Now, thankfully, you've got a very short course. Yes. And so you can whiz round it. I see. So you're not trying to save battery power. Exactly. You, can, you can let it all go at yeah. once. So I'm sort of taking from that, from that, from what you said then, that the, the reason we don't all drive around in, a, in really nice, clean electric cars is because of batteries. It's not the, it en the engines are fine. The, the electric motors do the job. Yeah. But it, yeah, it's they... powering them. The beasts of Bodmin have scavenged a 72-volt milk float motor, which will only need six 12-volt car batteries to give it top speed around our off-road course. And driven on by Captain Brian, they have scavenged all the major components to harness that power. Batteries are the least of the Seven's worries. The easy-going biker's low-voltage scavenging means that their plan for an electric off-road milk float comprises a rather ropey old motor and a heavy, wheelless jeep. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning, morning, Robert. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Now, this is a real mystery to me, because that... Something to do with it. It is something to do with it. That's the contact yeah. block. We've got a bit of a dilemma now. We were going to drop this into a um, four-wheel drive vehicle, like a like Suzuki. A little, or little a, Suzuki Jeep like yeah, they got next door. Like they got next yeah. door. I mean, that's, now <laughs> gone, yeah. that's now gone missing. And right. we've found a nice Suzu Trooper outside. Right, yeah. But we cannot find any wheels for it. it. Right. So, so we're so. having to reconvene now and, uh, and think of some other method. Looking of for something else out there. Another right, electric vehicle of some sort. Yeah. It's an absolute disaster for the biker boys. They're going to have to come up with a new plan. Keep looking around. There must be there somewhere must along be the line out there we can use. another machine of some sort. OK, then. I'll have a look. With six hours remaining, biker boys, the Sevens, have a massive task ahead of them. Their sloppy scavenging means they have to start from scratch. Cornish classic jag lovers, the Beast of Bodmin, are an altogether better tuned outfit. But their speedy build might be slowing down. Let's go back to our drawing on the board. Expert Paul wants to make certain that the plans they have formulated are being followed to the letter. To the next. Guys, guys, look, you know, we've got a hell of a engineer and this is up yeah. first, so we can work out that afterwards. Well, well we've got to get some of the bits for this. We need Keep a, it in the, back the motor of our on the gearbox is very important. Lunchtime, we can have a look at uh, yeah. that, can we? But Captain Brian doesn't want to get bogged down with details. He wants his team fitting their electric motor. If I, if I make a couple of plates, one will go across there to catch 72 yeah. and then we can offer it up okay, and then well, just I'll get, I'll get that, measure up. I'll get that yoke off the, off the shaft and start okay. thinking about mounting the flywheel right, onto I'll that. I'll make these first then, OK? Right. The Battle of Wills has been won by Captain Brian and whilst expert Paul is left alone with his complex wiring, the beasts are speeding ahead with the construction of their four-wheel drive dairy deliverer. Michael, found anything yet? Biker Boys the Sevens are still stuck on the start line. Axel, found anything yet? Slick Mick and Axel aren't so slick in the scavenging department. Sometime today, please, thank you. Fortunately, Mick is retreading his steps. Staring at me all the time. Mick has found an electric forklift truck buried deep in the heap. It's staring at us. It's hidden behind here. It's a really nice one. It could be the answer to their problems. 
but it's going to take the whole team to dig it out, eating up more valuable time. Even Rob's getting stuck in to help the Seven salvage their day, but at least they're starting to work as a team. Well, I hope it's all been worth it. Well, if you get it out, is it? Do you think it's a goer? It looks like it's it, got. It's it got, looks. It looks pretty good. Are those the engines down yeah. the front? Are they are huge, yeah, it's aren't got they? two one-pin great electric motors on the front. Right. With a complete control system in it, so it looks good. So that whole system there, you can keep as one lump. The, the I hope so. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We'll know a bit better when we. When you've got it out. When and if we it. get it out. Right. <laughs> no, it's still a bit more rubbish to move. I'll yeah. help. I'll move that bit. Thank you. There, That's... We, go. there we go. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you later on. <laughs> <laughs> Confidence is sky high in the beasts of Bodmin's build. Their milk float motor is a good runner. Nice and quiet. Do you reckon that will give us some torque, that thing, then? You're only running it on 12 volts now. We're going to be running on 72. <laughs> and their lightning legwork has rattled the sedate sevens. But They've got a good. Suzuki Jeep in there, and all they're doing is ripping bits off it. Yeah. Right. It's up to the biker's expert, up. Nick, to take right. command. We're going to drive that back up there. Yeah. And they're going to get... They're going to get despondent, but then we've got to, got to crack on and get yeah, yeah, chassis, chassis or whatever way we're doing. We've really got to push yeah. forward now. Will the seven small wheel cumbersome forklift be any kind of match for the beast's mighty motor and off-road chassis? It's been a tough morning for happy-go-lucky bikers, the sevens, as they strive to build the ultimate off-road electric milk float. But there may be light at the end of the tunnel as they found a working forklift. It only runs at 48 volts, so isn't as powerful as the Beast's 72 volt motor, but has a complete control unit, making it very reliable. Its biggest problem, though, are the three tiny wheels, which aren't at all suitable for off road terrain. Fortunately, expert Nick has a cunning plan. Can we get, can we get bigger wheels on this as it is, do we think? If we left all that as it was, right, right remove the rear steer wheel, yeah. put an extension on the front, and turn and drive it the other way. Yeah. To give themselves more ground clearance, the Sevens plan to weld large wheels onto the forklift's small wheels. Steering is also a big issue, so they're going to attach a front axle and steering wheel to the rear of the forklift. However, in order for the driver to see where he's going, they're going to have to drive the forklift in reverse. It'll drive at the same speed in reverse, but they'll have one driver steering and another facing backwards, operating the accelerator and the brake. Let's hope two heads are better than one. And with half the day wasted, it'll take a miracle to finish on time. In contrast, the highly efficient beasts of Bodmin already have a 4x4 vehicle and a powerful electric motor. But things are going to get tougher as they need to attach the two together and are relying on their experts' plan to get power from the batteries to the motor. Captain Brian is fully aware of the task ahead of them and is pushing his team to get the electric motor mounted as soon as possible. But expert Paul is a bit of a perfectionist. I think we, if we can get it a bit better than that, I think we'll be... We're working on it. Yeah. And his critical eye could seriously That's slow right. down the beasts. Look, got to be better than that. Yeah. <laughs> but we can get it. Don't panic, Mr. Manley. Don't panic. Much to the annoyance of Brian. Brian wanted to give the expert 20 quid to go down the pub with and lose him all day, but we'd really be lost without him. He really does know his onions on electric cars. Expert Paul's precise methods are crucial for the complex wiring involved in electric motors. But will it prevent the beasts from completing their build on time? Time is in short supply for Essex bikers, the Sevens. But Slick Mick has found a slick solution to the forklift's rough ride. These off-road wheels can be welded directly onto the small wheels, increasing the ground clearance and doubling the speed of the forklift. Uh, teams, uh, this is your five-hour time check. You have five hours now. remaining, yeah, teams. Oh, thank you. It's been there, yeah. yeah. Another ten hours on it, and we'll be all right. <laughs> With only five hours left, both teams really must up the voltage and crack on. The sevens seem fairly relaxed about the mammoth task ahead. Yeah, oh, multi yeah, brushes right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> Got to make him look pretty, on we? You know, but well, he can't get dirty, can he? <laughs> oh. He and with Captain Bob entertaining the troops, the rest of them are racing ahead, matching up the front end of the forklift with their new front axle. Uh, Robert, do you feel they are, do they are doing, doing all right? I think that the Seven's going to be very exciting. Right. Because they're going to have two drivers. <laughs> <laughs> one, one guy's be, going to be steering, and the other guy's going to be using the throttle. Why can't one person do both, do we know? They've taken the steering wheel off the forklift right. and put steering wheels from the milk float in front 
that's where the steering column is. Someone's got to be on that steering yeah, column at the front, the and steering. someone else is on what would have been the control for the forklift. Right. I think for the beasts, they're going to have uh, the harder work now to sort out because Paul's got a lot of um, control electrics to sort out, and they're in the process of putting in the motor onto the gearbox, and that's got to be aligned very accurately. Yeah. It's like a glove. That's good. Right. So he's so he's actually building the the, the electronic system that will. Regulate how much electricity goes to the motor and how it, fast it turns. He is indeed. It's not what you would find on a modern electric vehicle. Right. But it's what you'll find in a scrapyard. Now that you've actually seen these two machines beginning to take shape, I've really yeah. got to insist that you, you, you put your money on one of them. Well, at, at the moment, I'm going to go with the four-wheel drive, which is the beast. The beast. The beast of Bodmin's off-road shell and powerful motor has put them in the driving seat. But it's not all plain sailing. The reliability of their milk float rests on the complex control system designed by their boffin expert, Paul. This is all, this is all looking a bit too, too <sighs> quick. You've got a, there's an electric motor in already. Flywheels on, clutches on. And gears. Then, so what the complicated thing you've got to do now is control the, ele the electricity going to the motor. That's right. We've got to step the uh, 72 volt volts from the batteries in right. stages to the motor. We step the voltage. So what does that is, instead of it sliding up, as, as yeah, it, it goes bzzz, 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 like that. It's, it's a jump to each. That's right. To accelerate their vehicle, the beasts are going to use an old Victorian method known as a rectactor circuit. The batteries are mounted in a series with a contact separating them. As the accelerator is pressed, a cam timer will turn until it closes a contact, adding the power of the next battery. It's a simple design, but it could be a rough ride as the power will leap up in stages rather than gradually. Because if we go straight from 0 to 72, right. um, we'll probably just shear the input shaft off the gearbox. Because oh, the engine is powerful enough to damage that... Well, a motor that size, yeah. um, for probably 10, 20 seconds, will produce 500 horsepower. That's a lot, isn't it? Now? Yes. Oh, yes, that is a lot. The sevens. <laughs> oh, this is looking rather good. Is it all fixed and all together? And ah, no, I can see it's not welded. Not quite welded. We're getting to that stage now. Yeah. So, OK, so, but this looks like the front of a vehicle, and that looks like the front of a vehicle. Yeah, it's a push me pull you. That's, that's the back. A, ah, this is so the front. this is the back, and this, this is the front? Is, yes. We've, yeah, that's we've one thing we're in agreement about. <laughs> so are there other things you're not in agreement about? No, 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 no not at all. <laughs> the Sevens forklift has a smaller motor, but as a complete unit, it should be more reliable as they don't have any fancy wiring problems. But they have a massive job on their hands, turning it into an off-road vehicle. Adding larger wheels is helping their push-me-pull-you pint deliverer take shape. A confusing shape, mind you, and a confusing way of driving. Captain Bob could be in for a nasty shock. The brakes and accelerator are controlled from the forklift, not the milk float. I'm used to pumping the brakes. So the Seveners have got their forklift yeah. and their milk truck, and they've stuck the two together. Yeah. They said it can go both ways. I will keep going at the front or that the, that the back. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter. It can go either way. So push, push me, pull me. <laughs> Because over the other side, I mean, they're very confident, but it sounds very exposed, very kind of Victorian wiring, where, like, like in Frankenstein, where you pull the lever and goes, Kzzzt! and they're in the rain, oh, <laughs> in no. a muddy field. Kzzzt! Just and hold these two wires together. <laughs> yeah. The electricity will flow through your body, but you won't feel it. Yes, let the electricity flow. You're a very good conductor, you're mostly water. Kzzzt! Both our teams have their work cut out with their electric motors but our challenge requires them to carry and safely deliver 12 large milk crates, which isn't as simple as it sounds. You could still, you could still put the crates in the middle. I've done a bit of killjoy, but I think you've got to find it hard. It's two sitting there, look. Well, you see it's going to go right up the front, isn't it? Yeah. Can we put it an extra do. tray on the side here? One either side? Just no, put the problem side. with the back. Well, if we had them there, well, because it's the worst place to put them. Just tie them down so they don't come off. Hinge there. A couple of little brackets and one rope at the back will hold the whole lot in. Or two bits, just to be. There's not exactly resounding agreement in either camp. <laughs> it's my real <view> dirty man! <laughs> uh, teams, you have three hours remaining. Three hours remaining, teams, thank you. Captain Brian is growing more impatient with his methodical expert. How's the wiring coming on? Is that it? That's how it's all going to be mounted. Right. How long is it going to take to actually wire it? Um, We've one, one an hour. Only, we're only looking about three hours left. So. I think it'll take about an hour, I think. OK, so we're done. To both. do that bit, and then we've got to run the cables to the, um, the switch at the front. Well, some of, one of us could be doing that. 
less than three hours remaining, and whilst Paul scratches his head over their complex control panel, headstrong Brian is determined to move things along and has taken it on himself to wire up the Suzuki. It's vital that they don't get their wires crossed, or they could be in for a nasty shock. Welcome to this week's Scrap Lab, where we are going to reverse the science of an electric motor and create our own electricity using a washing machine motor and a bicycle. By attaching the wheel to the prop of the washing machine motor and pedalling furiously on the bike, you can spin the rotor inside the motor. As the magnetic rotor passes by the magnetic casing, it attracts electrons, creating electricity. The faster the rotor is spun, the more electrons move across. This is known as current. If it's spun fast enough, you can create enough current to power a light bulb. And you've built your own homemade generator. Electricity is a very clean source of energy, and Captain Bob has spent most of his energy staying clean. The rest of the team have been dirtying themselves with the mammoth task of turning their forklift into a suitable off-road vehicle. Bob, though, doesn't have a speck of dirt on him, a fact not missed by Slick Mick and Axel. They'll be a lot quicker now, Bob's gone. <laughs> Work with Mick and Axel has been great fun, actually, and the expert, Nick, is pretty good as well, and uh, we're getting on well together. No arguments, no spanners, fron, no tantrums. It's excellent, yeah. Enjoy myself, actually, yeah. Our teams, you have two hours remaining. Two hours construction time remaining, teams. Thank you. With the day drawing to a close, Jovial Essex bikers, the Sevens, are making excellent progress on their back-to-front milk float. You've been back to the hotel and had a shower? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's definitely going to confuse them, you know. They're going to go, now, which way does it drive? Confuses me. <laughs> now, Robert, one of the problems that I can see today is a worry. It's more a worry than a problem, is that both teams have done rather well. Yes. They've both built machines that look very good. You know, I'm wondering what, what, whether we've made it too easy for them. I don't know. Oh, I don't think so. We don't know whether the motor that the um, beasts have used is going to perform properly at the full voltage. They've only actually run it at 12 volts, right. and it's going to be running at 72. The Seven's vehicle, that looks quite heavy. It does. Um, and it has no rear suspension whatsoever. No. I think it's going to be quite exciting when they go down one of the drops. Right, yes, um, with, with only one person with brakes and then he's facing back. Yes. It's going to be a scary moment for him. <laughs> is. Has your favourite changed at this point? You Sadly, still? no. <laughs> Judges' favourites, the Beasts of Bodmin, have reached a crucial stage in their build. The success of their design rests on the reliability of the control panel that expert Paul has constructed. But will it match up with the wiring that Captain Brian took upon himself? You get in the driving uh, position, I'll get I'll in the driving position. These, these overalls are a bit tight. <laughs> Hang on, I'll put the handbrake on. Mick, yeah. that's not the left ear you're deaf in, is it? What one? That one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? You look very comfortable there. Oh, it feels look... cosy. Is it, yeah. is it nice and cosy? Yeah. I can't quite work out. Which way does it go? That way. Oh, it does go that way. So it, you're it facing backwards. Way. Yeah, I'm, I've got the controls. Uh, That's brilliant. So that is theory. as as it was built in the vehicle. All that yeah. stuff is yeah. the same. Even down to the original wheels on the front. They're still in there. Yeah, they're, they're still, still in, in there. there. Yeah. There's no suspension on that. Not on the back. Bit. No, he's got suspension on the front. Right. Yeah. So it'll be a, it'll be a. Uh, quite interesting a lot. ride. Yeah. And if the crates start jumping about, you know, right. I could. You can just hold on to the catch yeah. the odd pint yeah. as it flies out. Yeah. The beasts of Bodmin may be favourites, but they might have an unreliable design. With only an hour to go, Paul and Steve are having a bit of a wiring problem. So it's actually... we got we've got these back to front then. Brown at the front goes into orange. It should go in the order white, red, brown now. Well, where's the red there? I mean it doesn't seem it should be a red. Where's the red? I mean, what the hell? Ah, oh, well, nobody's connected the red. Oh. In his haste to get things done, Captain oh, Brian, Brian has wired up the vehicle incorrectly. Electric. Brian's booby-trapped us. Sabotage. <laughs> what? what? You, connect, you connect to a red, red at the front and you cut the red short at the back. <laughs> Any fault in the wiring will scupper their chances tomorrow. He's not the only captain causing problems. Who cut that off then? Some he uh, did, didn't he? He was an urban, yeah. isn't he? Oh, captain's, captain's always right. So. Oh, <laughs> captain's always right. What was it? Excess weight? <laughs> yeah, mate. No, it just... Uh, that'll do. 
Paul, a oh, little birdie told me the wiring wasn't going quite as, as in such a straightforward fashion as you hoped it might. If it had been connected up, it would have done damage, but I picked it up because I keep checking my wiring diagram again and again and again. Is it and kind of collecting A3 to C to D and you have to get it right oh, every time? Oh, yes. Um, I, I think my diagram's gone wandering off, but it was around. Uh, there it oh, is. Oh, yes, that is my little diagram. Can you see that? Easy as ABC. <laughs> what sort of pattern do you reckon, Mick? Well, it's got to match the other side, hasn't it? <laughs> it's got, well, it's no, got to match the other side, yeah. Like yeah. The Sevens are taking desperate measures to turn their forklift into an off-road vehicle. Don't go too deep, though. <laughs> That's it. Time's ticking for our teams, and it's starting to get tense in the beast's build. Oh, what's the story then, fellas? Very, very close indeed. I heard that. Yeah, no, I seem to have heard, heard that before, actually. Brian is still impatient with Paul's methodical approach. The Sevens have got their machine in shape remarkably quickly, but in their haste, they might have taken some rather risky shortcuts. And we weren't we going to put a bit of a weld there? We was going to. We was going to have that. No, 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 it's a safety feature. Plastic welding. Yeah. Plastic welding. <laughs> <laughs> safety feature. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I try it then? Yeah. It's bad news for the beasts. No. Their time has evaporated before their eyes Nothing. and their motor is still not working. Uh. Has Paul's control system curdled their chances? Right, here we go. Ready? Oh yeah, it's turning. Only minutes remain. The engine is turning, but not the wheels. There must be something wrong with their gear system. Has it all gone wrong for the beasts in the final stages? Are we fixed? What's going on? What do you reckon? It's the uh, hub yeah, lock locked in. Yeah, we go now, we go now. What? Go. The diffs are working fine. What, what do you want? Oh, watch that gong go. Oh, yeah. Thanks, OK, Paul. team, Wait, your no. time <laughs> is up. Put down your welders and drink your bedtime milk. <laughs> Yes. Because tomorrow oh you'll be up with the milkman to compete in the Scrap Heap Electric Car Off-Road Challenge! Yay. Well done, teams. Good build. Well done. It's been a high-voltage ten hours for our teams, but will the beasts of Bodmin become the fastest milkman in the West Country in their waywardly wired Sparky Suzuki? Or will their chances be curdled by the seven steady but stupid back-to-front forklift? The beasts of Bodmin and the Sevens are making some final adjustments to their manic milk floats. Really, we want to keep... As they ready themselves to carry their 12 crates of milk around our off-road course, making four deliveries on the way. Each team has two attempts to race against the clock, but for every incomplete delivery, they'll be penalised 30 seconds. The team with the most condensed time over two legs will be in the land of milk and honey and through to the next round. And I've got no idea what we're going to see here today, because in terms of speed, I can't help imagining it's going to be milk float speed. But you think they are capable of, they're going to be capable of faster than that? Ooh, one of them should be a lot faster than milk float. I'm not sure about the other one, but we'll have to wait and see. So, th so what it might be, it is a bit of a tortoise in here. We have, might have one that goes really fast but could fall to bits. Yes. And one that might go a bit slower but is possibly going to get to the end. Let's hope so. Yes. <laughs> so in terms of favourites then, I've got a sneaking suspicion you, your, you, your favourites are the beasts. I, I would definitely say the beasts are going to win. Right. First to deliver their milk are the Sevens. Captain Bob is up front on steering duty and Slick Mick is pushing the pedals in the back. That's Will they be able to coordinate their driving? Right. Looks like they're nearly ready to go. So fingers crossed, all goes yeah, well. Right. Excellent. And they put all the milk in the right places. <laughs> uh, so yes. don't spill the milk. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Sevens, go on the sound of the horn! <laughs> Whoa, look at that move. That is much faster than I expected. Ah! Ah! <laughs> 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 I'm not a little bit of half the bottles. <laughs> what a disastrous start. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Oh, I'm spilling out like that. <laughs> They've reached the first drop off, but they're definitely short of a pint or two. Strap, how is it? It's in and out. It's fairly quick, actually. It's a bit like a sort of an off road Dalek. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's really what it is. <laughs> it's just like a blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Right, Mick, we're coming up to an hill. With Slick Mick facing the wrong way, they're having trouble knowing when to stop. 
Oh, 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 I so it is having oh. trouble getting up those hills. No, that's okay. good. All right. There, I, stop, I, stop, I think it's learning stop. how to control it because... Right. They're not missing any deliveries, which is a good oh, thing. Going. Yes. <laughs> There's a couple of bottles left. <laughs> Even Captain Bob doesn't know their front from their back. Off they go again. Good acceleration, though. Right, go get bumpy in there, Mick. Here we go. With no rear suspension, they must take this next part of the course steadily. It's got to be a very odd experience for the for the, the throttle man, for oh, Slick Mick. I don't think he's got no idea what's coming, has he? Oh, what's they go again? Are they going again? Oh, there they go. Oh! <laughs> well, that's one way to make a delivery, but it looks like the sevens are going to get more penalty points. They've got to have that's one or two bottles. Most of the bottles left. gone. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got no milk left. That's it. Stop. Up. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, oh, they've gone stop, past, stop, past, they got past. Oh, 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 that does happen when you're in a rush. Come on, guys. Come on. With their final drop-off sort of complete, Mick oh, can floor come. it. Now get it up that hill. Very oh, good. Straight over. Brilliant. Oh, <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> take some more milk bottles just as they cross the finishing line. <laughs> that looks a little bit bumpy. Have you got sore bottoms? You've got good padding on your on your cushions. Well, I'll let you know when my eyes stop going up. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, it looked fantastic when all the bottoms came flying out. I was quite enjoying it. First bump is like the uh, the big one in Blackpool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I couldn't see that, so he was getting the best ride, really, wasn't he? I was yeah. just like, oh, dear. The sevens were more milkshake than milk delivery. Only one complete drop-off lumbers them with a time penalty of one minute 30 and an overall time of 5 minutes 36 seconds. A little bit of a problem. The beasts of Bodmen are our judges' favourites. Captain Brian is at the wheel, but will their archaic wiring last the distance? Do you really want to win this? Do you want to get through to the next round? Let me wipe two again, to. Really? Simple as that. Absolute confidence. No problem. It's not an option. Beasts of Bodmen, hold on tight and don't burn your diodes. Go on the sound of the horn! Oh, so, so quiet. And nice and nippy. Very fast over the first... <laughs> the beasts are flying along. Their Suzuki is giving them a real edge. It's so bizarre, because not, normally every test you're deafened by the noise of the engine. First delivery being made now. They're off again. Right, give it a bit of whirly, I think. Mm. Their first delivery is complete, and Paul's scrap heap circuitry is holding up well. Whoa, look at this. We're well, second house, second house, wasn't that? Right? Was that the second house you just passed? The beasts were it... racing along so fast, they missed their second drop-off. You missed the house. They're, they're not losing any bottles, that's good. You don't want to spill any of your, of your dairy products on the way. No, it might be butter by the time they get there, <laughs> but... <laughs> Go on, boy! Come on, boy! Fourth house. They've got to be really careful they don't pick up any more penalties. Last delivery to make now. That's it! They've completed their final delivery and can race towards the finish. Oh, well. Well done! Well done! Well done! Well done. Well done. Well driven. Are you pleased with that? Yeah, except they missed one drop off. Well, I have to say, that is a 30 second time penalty for missing the house. I'm really disappointed I missed that house tonight. Oh, Bryce. That silly. That Don't beat yourself up about it. You've got another go. The beast milk float made mincemeat of the course, but by missing a drop off, they incurred a 30 second penalty. Although they still have a commanding time of 3 minutes 31 seconds. Round two will test the top speed of our teams. There's no milk deliveries to worry about, just the bumpy terrain. It will take an amazing lap to snatch victory for the Sevens, but Nick and Axel are ready for the off. OK, Sevens, don't lose your bottle. Go on the sound of the horn. Go! Wow. Oh, did a wheelie. Look at him go. Speed. That is speed. All this oh, what's that? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> He's only got three crates left. That is horrendous. That must have been really horrible being on the back of that. No idea it was coming, would you? They're pushing the forklift as hard as they can, but it looks like a curdling ride. Oh, no, they're going pretty well, aren't they? I think they're laughing. <laughs> they are. Oh, my God. I think they're enjoying themselves. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I think it wouldn't be surprising if a couple of wires had come loose at that point. Well big. What oh, that is. Acceleration yeah. on that thing. Look at that.
<laughs> They're zipping round to the final straight. Only a couple of humps to survive. <laughs> was that was that fun at all, or did it just hurt? I nearly dislocated my shoulder on that. <laughs> Look at you laughing down there. <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> it was a bone-shaking round, but the sevens can afford to laugh. They've clocked up an impressive time of two minutes two seconds. It means the beasts need to get round in less than four minutes, which shouldn't be a problem as long as their control board lasts the distance. Beasts of Bodmin, get ready to churn it up. Go on the sound of the horn. <laughs> oh, very Ooh, gentle start that time. Genteel start. Smooth. Ooh. Learning the control. Whoa! <laughs> <you're> <laughs> Oh, 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 I'm oh, losing crates. crates. No, their crates are still... Oh, no, I think he might have dropped one. I think he must have done, yeah. Ooh. They've certainly... Oh, they have. Oh. They've lost a few crates, but they are oh, going well, man, aren't they? They're racing. Beautiful. <laughs> this thing flies. Four. Dab the brakes. Nice one, nice Let's one. See, we're doing it. Keep fourth. They're like. dropping crates. <laughs> <by> the <dozen. laughs> right, I've got to drift steady, steady. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Go for it. Oh, boy. The hubs are causing them no problems at all. Oh, they caught some air, then. <laughs> Take it easy on this one. We don't want to roll it over sideways. <laughs> go, 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 go! go. Yes. That'll do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Breaks. That's a staggering time of one minute and 15 seconds. Well, teams, some challenges on Scrap Heap are scary, some are frustrating, some are epic, and some are just downright hilarious. <laughs> and it gives me great joy to say that today's challenge has fallen into the last of those categories. So well done to both of you. Now, it was, of course, a speed test, so the winners are the team that went the fastest. But today's runners-up definitely won the prize for being the funniest, and they were the Sevens. Well done, oh, Sevens. Well, well done. Well done. Coming a close second in terms of comedy, because you made me laugh. <laughs> but uh, without doubt, the fastest vehicle, very impressive. The beats above him, well done. Hey, well done. <laughs> Drink some of it. <laughs> And if that rattled your bottles, join us next week for more cream-curdling action. All aboard for next week's challenge, where our two teams get wet behind the ears in an epic maritime battle to see who can build the fastest bodged-up boats. <laughs> <laughs>